Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Riyad here with another Game Maker tutorial. Um, today we're going to be making uh, a multiplayer game. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that one. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So um, I have an empty project here. All I've done is I've imported a sprite for the player. Um, I've only imported one sprite for now, which is the other the idle animation. Uh, we're going to be adding other sprites uh, later in the video. And I've also imported a font. Um, doesn't really matter which one you use, just pick your, the one that you like or anything. Um, and a room. Well, the room is going to have to be 640 by 480. Uh, you can pick any size you want, doesn't really matter. Depends on your the game that you're trying to make. Um, but for now, I think 640 by 480 will be just fine. Um, Alright, so first thing first, we're going to make a menu. So in the menu, we're going to have to either choose if we want to create a game ourselves or join an existing one. So let's go ahead and add a create event. And in the create event, we're going to have an array for the options. So I'm going to create an array called menu, if I can type, menu, thank you. Um, so the menu gonna, is going to have two options, create game, <coughs> if I can spell, create game, um, second option being join game. And let's go ahead and add another one, um, maybe for exiting the game, I don't know. Yeah, a menu with two options isn't really an option, is it? So we're going to have uh, another variable. Uh, we're gonna name it current index. Um, this is um, basically just to tell which option uh, we're selecting at the moment. So let's go ahead add a draw GUI event. Um, draw GUI. All right. So I'm gonna pick the font that I've uh, imported. So draw set font event main, if that's what it's called. Yes, it is. And we're gonna draw the menu. So we're gonna have a for loop for var i equals zero. So basically, we're gonna look for um, for every item in the array. So here we're gonna if check if i is less than array length one uh, d. So it, since uh, it's a one dimensional array and its name is menu and i plus plus. All right. So in this case, we're gonna um, draw the options. So draw text. Um, well, it's gonna be better if we draw it in the center. So I'm gonna. Uh, Draw set uh, horizontal align to far center. Um, nothing too fancy, just uh, and we're gonna reset it back to left when we're done with the menu. So yeah, let's not forget to do that. All right. <coughs> so we're gonna choose like room width divided by two to be in, uh, in the exact same center. Uh, hundred plus. 32 times i should be fine and the text itself is menu with the index of i so i'm gonna add another um instruction here which is draw set color now basically just to tell which uh, option we're choosing we're gonna change like the color for the option so i'm gonna check if the current index equals i and in this case we want the text to be green um otherwise it's gonna be um uh, white so if you're not familiar with this kind of syntax well basically um this kind of like a minimize if statement uh instead of creating like a variable c and like choosing uh, making it green in case uh current index is i or white if it's not this is like uh the minimum way to do it just add like a uh, explanation mark a uh, question mark sorry after like the, uh, the condition and you have like this is uh, the variable that's gonna take if it's true, um, and this is like the variable that's gonna take if it's false. Uh, nothing too fancy. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and add a step event. Now in this step event, we're gonna be able to like choose different options. So to do that, we're gonna check for keyboard input. So if keyboard check pressed, um, well, we're gonna just use use like the arrows for now. For so VK down is gonna increase the index. The current index. Oh sorry current index plus plus and we're gonna do the exact same opposite for um the v key up so it's just gonna decrease the um current index all right we also need to check if it doesn't go like um over the limit so um 
I think there is an option for that. Current address is called clamp. Is it? Yes, clamp current index. So the minimum should be uh, okay. So this is like the minimum. The minimum is zero, of course, and the maximum is like the array length. So we can like put three in here, but we may add other options to the array length. Um, so who knows? The array length menu. Oh, sorry, menu minus one. All right because uh, the index starts from zero, all right? Um, all right, so let's go to the room, add the menu to it, and let's see how it looks. So press F5 to compile the project. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna create two objects. The first one being the server. So obj server and obj client. All right. We're gonna mess for with them for now, just like create them, but then wait for the game to. All right, so here it is. So we can browse between the options, create game. Um, well, nothing, nothing is happening when I press like enter because we haven't like done anything. But at least like we have uh, a simple menu, nothing too fancy, but it will uh, get the job done. All right, so now let's go ahead and um, well, here is how it's gonna happen. So this is like the menu room, all right? So I'm gonna name it RM menu, RM menu, all right? I'm gonna make another room, and this is like where the game is. So I'm gonna name it RM game, all right? Now in the RM game, put the client in here, and let's make sure that it's the same size as the um, menu, all right? So the client is sitting in the RM game room, all right? And go to the server, make it persistent, and get back to the menu. So now we're gonna add some functionality to our menu. So what we're gonna do here is check if we press the um, keyboard check, press the enter key. VK enter. Now in this case, we're gonna add a switch statement. So depending on the current index, we're gonna do like different commands or options. So switch current index. So in case zero, which is uh, create a game, all right? So, so here we're gonna create a game, right? Create a game. So what we're gonna do is instance create, instance create, um, okay, instance, Create right layer. So I'm just gonna create like a server. So <coughs> instances like this is like the layer where to create it, and the object itself, which is obj server. All right, we want to create a server. Not only that, but we also want to go to the next room. Um, so room, go to next. All right. So uh, why isn't why isn't that highlighted? Obj server. Oh yeah. I misspelled server. All right. So let's get back to the client. Make sure that everything is. Oh, sorry. To the menu. Make sure that everything is all right. Or uh, okay. Seems like it. Uh, so in the second case, which is join a game. So basically, we just want to uh, room go to next since the client is already there. We don't have to do anything else. Just join the game. Um, and the client will like automatically connect to the game. Now, in the final case, which is like exiting, uh, quitting the game, so we're just gonna do game end or exit. I don't know. Yeah, game end. All right. I don't really use this function a lot, but um, yeah. So now we have like a proper menu, uh, simple but efficient, I would say. So yeah, um, we can't really tell if anything is working. So I'm just gonna, um, you know, so we can browse between the options, create a game. Yeah, so you can tell that we are in the next row. Um, so yeah, let's now make uh, some stuff. For the server, we're gonna like initialize um, some variable. Well, first of all, first of all, we need uh, a gl some global variables. Um, we need like an IP address for the client to connect to. 
maximum players per game and the port for the servers. Um, all right. So when we create a server, we want to like choose a um, a port and the maximum client. So for now, to keep things simple, I'm I'm, I'm gonna skip that and choose like some uh, fixed values. Uh, so I'm gonna go to uh, server, create event, and we're gonna like initialize <coughs> initialize connection or s server all right so what do we need here first of all we're gonna need to create a server variable so we're gonna use this uh, function network network create server so the type here is obviously network <coughs> socket TCP all right this is like the most common protocol for like multiplayer games and for the port, well, I'm just gonna have like uh, a constant in here. Now this is the new uh, way to create like constants in GMS2. So just like add um, macro, and I'm gonna name it port. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, if I can spell it right. Port, man, port. Or oh my god. You know what? Okay, port. <coughs> Give it like any value you want, and. Um, you know what, let's do the same for like max clients. Oh, I really can't type today. Max clients. And for now, we're just gonna have like four max clients. And uh, so this is gonna be port max clients. All right. Um, all right. So that's pretty much it for the server. This is like the function is gonna create the server and run it. And yeah. So now we need to add like uh, we're gonna need to create a DS map for the clients that are going to connect to the server. So DS map create um, and a list for the sockets. So sockets equals DS list create. So we're gonna store like every socket uh, in this list. We're gonna use like the socket as a key for the client and uh, the value we're gonna store like the player object for. Um, the client. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna be adding some buffers here later, but for now we're not going to need them. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and add the networking event. So here's where the magic happens. First of all, we're gonna need a variable called event ID. Now, event ID is we're gonna grab it from the async load map. This is like where GameMaker keeps track of like those networking stuff so uh, we're gonna grab the uh, ID from here all right so now we're gonna compare the ID with the server so if server equals event ID now in this case that means like someone is trying to connect to the server or a client is disconnected from the server to do to um, sorry to know what case we are dealing with we need another variable called type and we're gonna grab it from the same uh, map which is async load except that this time it's gonna be type now we're gonna grab another variable which is socket now it's gonna give us like the ID of the um, player that connected to the game or the socket so now we're gonna check if like a new uh, player connected to the server. So we're gonna check if type equals network um, type, sorry, type connect. Now, what do we wanna do in this case? First of all, we, we want to create a player for the game, uh, for, sorry, create an, a player object for the socket or for like the player that joined the game. Create a player, add the socket to the list and yeah that's pretty much it now in case like an existing client is disconnecting from the server then we want to uh, remove the player from the game like the player object uh, sorry this is disconnect uh, remove it from the list and uh, from the map as well 
So let's go ahead and do this stuff. So first of all, we're gonna add the socket to the list. So DS list um, add. Uh, so the list is sockets, and the variable is socket. All right. Now we want to create a player. Create a player. So for now, we're just gonna have. Uh, yeah, it's gonna make. Let's go ahead and make obj player. All right, let's give it a sprite. Uh, yep, sprite. Nice, but this should be just fine. All right, let's get back to the server. Now in here, we wanna create a player. All right, so var p equals instance create. Oh, I'm sorry, instance create layer. All right. Um, now for the position, we're just gonna like give it some random position. We'll just go with 100, um, 100 plus 32 times socket so that uh, when other clients connect they won't like spawn on in the same uh, position now this is like the instance layer ID um, and the object well obj uh, player all right uh, the final thing that needs to be done is like add this object to the clients map so we do that with ds map add so clients we're gonna use the socket as the key and the p as the variable now the final thing here in this like uh well i just noticed that this should be server sorry for that uh now i'm gonna be delayed now for like the when someone like disconnects from the server now in this case well we're gonna need to like remove the player or destroy it so we're gonna have to do like var p equals client and we're gonna go out and grab like the player um just to be sure that the player exists we're gonna check first if instance exists if instance exists exists um p and instance destroy uh, I'm sorry um, yeah I probably could have done it with the other way whatever instance man I can't type today instance destroy all right um, next we're gonna have to like remove it from the uh, list so DS list um delete wow so the list is sockets and we're gonna need to find the position of the socket so ds list find um index so socket and the value is socket all right um Last thing is to like remove it from the map, so this map delete. Um, this should be easy. Client and socket. That's pretty much it. Now, just to be sure that um, everything is working fine, I'm just gonna add like a, a simple draw GUI event here, um, which is gonna basically tell us how many players are connected to the server uh, at the current time. So just like a simple draw text will do the job. So draw text ten ten um, like players and plus string ds list size ds list size um, sockets. All right, and let's set the color to draw set. Wow, 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 wow. Chose it color. Um see why I'm using a new keyboard, that's why I can't like really type well I'm getting quite a hard time to get used to it. Uh anyway. Yeah, this should be fine for now. So let's go to the client and um setting up the connection. So we're gonna add a create event here. And well, first of all, the client needs a socket, all right? So we're gonna create a socket by network create um, socket. 
so the type is network socket TCP oops TCP alright and we're gonna create connect to the server so network connect uh, connect here it is so then use the socket the port and the IP address well for now we're just gonna connect to our local host and I'll show you how to connect to other um, play, uh, people's game and uh, yeah um, well that's basically it like the most basic stuff here so let's go ahead and run the game and see if everything is working fine Okay, so I'm gonna create a game first. All right, so no, nothing is working fine. <laughs> okay, what do we have here? So we still have like uh, zero players connected. Mm, why is that? Oh, okay, hold on. So this is the client, right? Yes, it is the client. Um, Wait a second. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was my bad. That's my bad. So, yeah, I've swapped between like the port and the IP address. So, that's on me. My bad. Okay. And we should do like some uh, fail safe error here. So, like, if in case we couldn't connect to this server. Uh, then we're gonna display a message and maybe restart the game or something. Uh, but don't worry, we're gonna be adding this um, in the next video. So create game. Uh, what's that? Okay, we got an error. Um, all right, what it is? Stack frame is exit um, network socket. Uh, what's wrong with that? Line thirteen for this server. Okay. line 13 what's going on what's happening um do, do, do. okay let me let me read that again Mm, okay, so let's see what's happening here. So async is like network and this server, an undefined value. Oh, what value? Var p um, line thirteen instance create layer. What? Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. This should be socket. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's my bad again. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, finger crossed. Everything should be fine now. Okay, alright, okay, finally. So, <coughs> we can see that we have like uh, pl uh, one player is connected, but we don't see like the player, like the player that is supposed to be created here. And that's because I don't have a surprise for it. Okay, so if I've accidentally like chose a mask, not. Uh, okay. Okay. I think I've broken a world record on how many wrong things you can do in such a short period of time. Whatever. Okay. Alright, okay, finally. So you can see that there is a client connected to the game, and just to make sure, if I run another instance of the game, and all right, come on. 
Oh, wait, did I switch? Oh, okay. Okay, I need to, like, uh, choose a different... Okay, I need to, like, choose the real compiler. Okay, so I'm gonna run the game one more last time, hopefully. Let's see how many minutes. Okay, almost 30 minutes. Um, okay, okay. Just to make sure that everything is running fine. Um, I'm gonna run two instances of the game and see if we're gonna see, like, two clients. Alright, come on. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna run two instances of the game. Okay, so in here I'm gonna choose create game. Okay, so as you can see, I have a player. Well, allow access. Um, it's got asking me this because of the server. So if you wanna, if you don't wanna like allow anyone from like uh, your local network to connect to, then feel free to decline it or something. Uh, well, in this case, I'm gonna join game. And yeah, so as you can see, the server, we can see that there are exactly like two players connected to the game now, and we have like two players and stuff, so yeah, so everything is working fine for now, and um, so in the next episode, or video, we're gonna make the player move, we're gonna make the clients able to see um, other people, and yeah, so that was it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one, peace.